Hello, welcome back to uh, Math 251. This is the second videos to uh, accompany the lecture notes on section 15.1, which you need to learn prior to our class on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. So in the first video, we talk about how to find the volume uh, of this particular region that is under the surface, z equal to fxy, but above this rectangular region, which we call r. And the idea was to set up this... Uh, uh, rectangular boxes. In the first video, I call it rectangular cubes, uh, but I think the better terminology is a rectangular box because cube kind of implies that the dimension is the same. So anyway, so the idea in the first videos uh, uh, that, that we talk about uh, how to find the volume of these regions is to set up uh, these rectangular boxes and find the volume of those rectangular boxes uh, as an approximation to the volume. And uh, we know that if you get a better, more and more rectangular boxes and find the volume of each individual rectangular boxes and uh, sum them up, those volume is going to be um, getting closer and closer to the actual volume of the regions under the uh, rectangular, the region under the function f x y above the rectangular box r. So this is the limiting process that we were not going to do because most of the time this is impossible. And uh, it's complicated. We don't do it like that. So we need a way out. And we do have a way out. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that thing a little bit later. Uh, but now we want to talk about uh, this concept of iterated integrals. Okay. So bear in mind that so we'll come back to this. Uh, we'll come back to, 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 to how do we actually do this computation. But forget about that for a moment. And uh, let us just do something that we call iterative integral, okay? So iterative integral is something that looks like this, okay? Right, so we do not have uh, r and then f, x, y, d, a anymore. So remember, this was the expressions that we saw earlier. The volume is given by the limits of all this uh, double sum related to the volume of the rectangular boxes. And that volume is denoted like that, right? So when you see something like that, r, uh, f, x, y, d, a, you know this is the volume of the region under the function f, x, y above the rectangular region r. Now, we're not looking at that for the moment. We are looking at an, an expression. We're not looking at this for the moment. We're looking at an expression like this, okay? Now, let's learn how to compute this, okay? This is computed like this, okay, hang on a second, let me get rid of this. Okay, so if you see this, what it means is that you have zero to three, you have one to two, you have x squared y, you have dy, and then you have dx. So you look at it from the inside, so you think of it like this, okay? It's very important, if it's this thing here is dx, dy, that, that process will be different, but Okay, let's look at it like that first. Look at the inside, okay? Now, when you see this, all right, meaning that you are going to do this integral with respect to the y, y is your only variable. Everything else is treated as a constant, which means in this, uh, in, under this parenthesis, right? Under this parenthesis here, under this parenthesis here, okay? You will integrate this just like in count one, with respect to dy, treating x as a constant. So you will do the following. You will do, okay, look at this thing here. You will do, you will concentrate, okay, you will concentrate on this expression. All right, you integrate respect to y. So x is a constant, so you basically even take the x out, x squared out because it's a constant. So x squared is out, okay. And then you integrate 1, 2, y, dy. So you have x squared integrate y dy, you have 1 over 2 y square, and then uh, this is for the y. So you substitute, this is for the y, y go to 2, y go to 1, substitute inside here, and you can see this gives you this, right? 1 over 2 x square, 1 over 2 x square, put the y here, so that's 2 square uh, for y go to 2, and then minus the y that is equal to 1. So obviously, if you do it like that, while holding your x as a constant, you don't substitute anything for the x, you substitute the thing for the y. So it's not a big surprise that this inner integral, 
that we just computed this part this inner integral give you something which related to x so this whole part right here that you see this inner integral after we uh, integrate them out okay after we integrate them out after we substitute a y and all that kind of stuff uh, you will get this is 3 over 2 x squared and then now you do this integral so now this integral is with the x okay there's no more y this is very clear okay it's just like in count one you take the 3 over 2 out right and then you integrate with respects to x so this is 3 over 2 right 1 over 3 x cubed and then substitute 3 over 0 into this thing so you will get this okay so everything that we talk about here we will get this so this is the part where we mentioned that this is the part that we get 3 over 2 x squared all right so now you integrate this and then after that uh, substitute this and then you get 27 over 2 so this iterative integral this iterative integral right here will have the values of 27 over 2 all right so that's what we call iterative integral now uh, let's look at exactly this x squared y but now uh, instead of dy dx let's reverse it reverse it to dx dy and also the range of integration here also reverse meaning that originally right look at the y y is from 1 to 2 x is from 0 to 3 so now when we reverse okay x is from 0 to 3 this is for the x y is from 1 to 2 now if you repeat this process you will get the same answer as well so if you repeat this process you will get this same answer so let's do that one more time all right let's do the in internal part first okay let's do the internal part this is the internal part so when you see 0 to 3 x squared y dx in this case x is your variable okay your y is a constant so you might as well just take this thing out and then you integrate x squared you get 1 over 3 x cubed the substitutions remember the substitutions is for the x okay so put the x in especially in the very beginning when you might get confused you might want to even write this thing down to remind you this is for the x so you substitute, so this is the y, okay, you substitute x, that will be x cubed minus 0 cubed. So this is 1 over 3, right, you have a y, and then you have a 3 cubed, might as well cancel this to become 3 squared, which is 9. So this is going to be 9y. So this is going to be our, uh, wait, did I screw up? Uh, x squared, x cubed, substitute 3 and 0, 3 cubed, so 3 squared, 9, so that will give us the 9 squared, right? Let's see. Oh, I still have the y outside, so this is substitute for the x. Hang on a second. Yep, everything is good. Uh, this is 27 over 3y, right? So this is 9y, okay? So the interior integral, if you see something like this, right? The interior integral. Yes, yeah, Sophie, what's up? Okay, so the interior integral here, okay? This one, uh, as you can see, you will substitute x into the thing. The end result should be something that is with y, right? So this is our expression that is only with the y. And then now you integrate this thing with the y uh, to get these answers that we have over here. Does that make sense? So let me say that one more time. You should be able to see that without even doing the uh, computation. So the important thing is to notice that the first step when we do this integral, we fix y as a constant. x is the only variable. You substitute, you integrate with x, and then you substitute the those value into the x. So there's no more x. Things that have left is the y. So expect this part here to give you an expression of y, right? Just like here, okay? Expression of y, and then you integrate that with respects to y. So you will get a number like that. So this idea that we talk about, this idea that we talk about is uh, what we call iterative integral. So, so that's what we call iterative integral. Now, how, how does that have anything to do with the volume 
that we were supposed to be computing in our uh, first videos. All right, now, so now let's talk about how that iterative integral, okay, uh, can help us find the uh, volume uh, of these regions that we talked about earlier. So that theorem, okay, is what we call the Fubini theorem. So Fubini theorem says that whatever things that we are interested at, interested in the, our first video, this thing, right? The volume uh, under the surface fxy above that rectangular region r can actually be computed through this iterative integral that we were talking about just now, okay? All right. Um, okay, so he says, okay, he says, Fubini, uh, Italian mathematician, he, he says that that volume thing, Right, actually, it's the same as this iterative integral, and actually, also, it's the same as this iterative integral. Now, the idea is very intuitive. You can see that uh, here as well. Um, okay, under the conditions as specified by the Fubini theorem, actually, the conditions is very simple. F just has to be continuous on this rectangular uh, rectangular uh, box here. Then this volume, volume of this region below the fxy, okay, below the surface fxy, and above this uh, rectangular region R, uh, can, be, can be thought of it this way. So in the first video, the way we find the volume is to set up the rectangular uh, boxes. He doesn't want to do it like that. He said that, okay, I don't want to do any rectangular boxes. Instead, I fix my x, okay, I fix my x, which is right here, x is a number between a to b. And then now let's look at the slices, okay? So fix your x, okay, basically kind of create a vertical plane. That vertical plane will slice through this region and it will create something that kind of looks like that. That is our z, this is our y. Don't forget x is fixed, okay? Look at the things that is changing here, right? This is the y. This is changes in y. Look at it over here. These are the y. So you'll see kind of a curve like that, okay? This is the y. Y is from C to D, okay? So your y is from C to D, all right? Because our region that we're looking at is so uh, x is from A to B. X is from A to B, your y is from C to D, okay? So when your x is fixed, look at this picture one more time. When your x is fixed, the y is from C to D. And then you have a curve that's like that. So if you integrate, okay, like just like in count one, we don't look at the x, x is fixed, it's a fixed constant. So if you integrate c to d, fxy, all right, dy, obviously dy because x is fixed, the only thing that is changing is the y. Look at the graph, right? So if you do this, okay, if you do this, x is fixed, okay, when you do this integral, what do you get is you will get the area of the slice. Just like in count one, this is the area of the slice. Okay, so that's why. Okay, this part here, you can write it as the area. All right, this area depends on x because if you if your x is here, you have a different slice. That area would be different. So the area is depending on where is your slices is made. Okay, so that's the area. So after you have done this, okay, you get this area. You want to move this x. Now, move your x. Move the x, find the area. Move the x, find the area. So, imagine that now adding up all those area will, will basically, right, your x move from A to B. So, the slices, right, you have this slice here, middle slice, middle slice, middle slice, outer slice here. So, by moving your, your x after you have done this step, moving your x around, you basically traces all the regions and that will get you the volume. So the volume for him, okay, is not computed by the uh, volume of the rectangular uh, boxes anymore. So the volume, okay, of that same regions is now the integral AB of your AX DX, okay? Right, what is your AX? AX is this one, so if you write it out, so this will be your AB, your AX is CD, FXY, 
okay, dy, that's for the dx. And we have seen this before. This is what we call earlier an iterative integral. So the iterative integral can now be interpreted as, uh, under the right conditions, can now be interpreted as the volume of the region that is uh, below the surface fxy above the rectangular region r. Right? So, so that's his way out of this. He don't want to construct the rectangular region. He wanted to find the area of the slice and then run through that, that area so that it cover up the entire object. Now, um, why do we talk about two different type of iterative integral before, right? So we have this one. We have our, in our first example here, we have the iterative integral that was uh, working with dy first and then dx. We also have another one, which is dx first and then dy. Uh, Fubini says that it doesn't really matter which, which order that you do, because if you decided to do the other way around, okay, so let's say you decided to do the other way around. So you have fxy, and then you have dx, meaning that this y here is fixed, okay? And then the x is running from a to b. So if you do this, and then you do this, okay? That is basically corresponds to the situation that you fix a y, you get this area. This area is an area that depends on y, and then after that, you integrate this thing with respects to y. So that is the iterative integral that we get. It doesn't, Fubini theorem says that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter how, which order you do it, right? Which order you do it, which slices you make it first. All this is going to give you the volume of the region that is under the function fxy, under the surface fxy, and above that rectangular region r, okay? All right, so once you know this, now you know uh, the simple way out of doing um, this, uh, this uh, double integral. So this double integral, you always do it as an iterative integral. Iterative means you do the x and then you do the y, iteratively. Or you do the y and then you do the x. Uh, FYI, uh, just like area in count one, you usually started to say, oh, this is the area under the curve, blah, blah, blah. Area can also be negative when you have things that's like that. So same with the volumes. You can, uh, um, I mean, the first video and here, we keep using the volume and all those stuff to kind of give you uh, intuitions. But, but uh, your fxy is not always positive. It can also be negative. So if you do the double integral, don't be surprised to get negative value. It's fine. Okay? It's okay. All right. So the rest of it, uh, you should be able to follow. The rest of it is all computational example now. So I want you to look at it. So for example... Okay, so this one here, it says that it says that you have a function f x y. Okay, this function f x y is y sine of x y, and then they give you the rectangular regions. When you see something like this, it means your x is from one to two, right? One to two. Your y is from zero to pi, so your y is from zero to pi. So this rectangular region is kind of like that. So you have something up there, you have something down here. So we've wanted to find the volume uh, of the uh, of this uh, thing that is below fxy above the rectangular region r, or the other way around. If fxy is below, or maybe fxy can be sometimes above the z-axis, sometimes below. It doesn't matter. Okay, you kind of know what that uh, meaning of this uh, integral now, and the way you do it, you can split them. Uh, into iterative integral. So you will say that, okay, so I can, uh, I can uh, do the x first. If I want to do the x first, I will put the x from 1 to 2, right? This is y sine x, y, all right? And then to do the dy. Uh, y is from 0 to pi. Now, if you do it like this, uh, your y is treated as a constant, so you don't have to use integration by parts. Or anything like that. This is something that's easy to do. Uh, if you decided to do dy first, and this is 0 to pi, this is y sine xy, that means that your, um, your x is a constant, your y is a variable. So this is harder to do because integral like that require you to use integration by parts because they have two functions of y multiplied together. So sometimes even though we can do um, 
two different ways to get the answers. Fubi doesn't really care which uh, which order you do it first. It's always the same. That's what Fubini theorem say under the conditions that the uh, function is continuous. So sometimes you might want to explore which order to do because sometimes one particular order is just easier. So I want you to kind of look at all the stuff here. It's all computational example. We have many, many examples here. Practice on how to do the iterative integral and uh, look at how we do the iterative integral. And that will be uh, the things that you need to do. Um, the when you come back on Wednesday, we wanted to talk about the same thing here, but we do not wanted to talk about a rectangular region R now. Our region R uh, can be in other kind of shape, can be this, this is a y, this is a x, can be any kind of stuff. So those are going to be a little bit harder. Uh, so make sure you get yourself. Uh, familiar with the concept of iterative integral. Make sure you know how to do those. And then on Wednesday, we'll be doing something a little bit more general. We don't have to restrict our region R always rectangular. That will be section 15.2. Um, we will work quite a lot of different examples. Um, there are different kind of things that you have to worry about when your region R is not rectangular. But when your region R is rectangular, things are very straightforward. All right, that's it. Uh, that's all you need to know prior to class on Wednesday. Thanks.